Hello, praise the Lord, beloved of God, welcome, welcome to our time again. It feels energizing to interact with God's people and thank you, thank you very much for always giving time to tune in, to listen in and interact with God's word. I welcome you warmly to this session, welcome you very, very warmly to this episode. We have been interacting with many and we shall continue interacting with many. And so before we start, let us offer a word of prayer. Father God in heaven, we appreciate you for your goodness. We appreciate you for your love and care. Thank you, God, for this time. And you pray that you bless us as we read through together again in this portion of scriptures that is going to help us to energize our spiritual lives, to continue living for ourselves, but above all, living for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Beloved, I appreciate God again for every moment of life that he gives me and for every moment of life that he gives you. And so God has been faithful and has been good, giving us the time, giving us another chance, another opportunity. Now, I confess that I have benefited a lot from this word. In as much as I come with it to you, in as much as we read it together with you, it benefits me fast. And so God has been faithful and I appreciate him for this arrangement. GNPI, thank you. Family TV, thank you. That this is going on to benefit us all. And so the episodes that I've been having, biblical personalities, the men and women that I've been reading about, the men that I've been interacting about, they are of great help. They have immensely blessed me because they were men and women during their generation. Now, they did their part and God blessed them, those that did good according to what God's word required. But those that did otherwise, there are also lessons that we pick from there. So as a person, I appreciate God that this is happening at this moment in time for us to interact with his word. Now, we have gone through several personalities and this Bible is full of many, many hundreds of men and women that the Bible talks about who were chanced to have their names appear here. And of course, there are very many others who were living then, who were working then, but they would not, their names would not appear here. And those whose names appeared here, they are of great help to us. And so we also work during our time. We worship during our time. We praise God during our time. And we work during our time so that time to come, there will be something good referred about us. There will be something good referred about you. And so you work. And so you pray. And so you worship. And so you do something. Actually, something will be remembered, remembered about you. So now the person here, do you know what? This is the man, another one in the Bible. Having looked at Daniel, the Ezekiel, Ezekiel with several episodes in there. Now we go to the next one. The next one is, the one who follows closely is Daniel. Actually, it's a biblical book. One of the prophetic books in the Bible that follows closely to the book of Ezekiel. Similar a little bit, but they have their own messages that they delivered. Now, Daniel is the book that we're going to dive into. But to set the ground for our interaction, let us just look at chapter 1. It has several verses, but it gives us the basis. Daniel the prophet, whose name stands out as the principal character because it bears his name. And so the book, Daniel chapter 1, I just want us to read a few verses and you discover that actually there is a lot more that you desire to read in this book. And so before we dive into a few interactions here and there, this chapter 1 verse 1 says that in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with some of the vessels of the house of God. And he brought them to the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and placed the vessels in the treasury of his God. Now it is giving us the background. Now how this land of Judah was besieged, the king and important people 
and important vessels, things that were used in the temple, were taken by, the, by King Nebuchadnezzar. Now, verse 3, Then the king commanded Ashpenaz, his chief eunuch, to bring some of the people of Israel, both of the royal family and of the nobility, important people. Now, verse 4, Youths without blemish, of good, exp of good appearance, and skillful in all wisdom, endowed with knowledge, understanding, learning, and competent to stand in the presence of in the, in the king's palace, and to teach them the literature and language of the childrens. The king assigned them a daily portion of the food that the king ate and of the wine that he drank. They were to be educated for three years, and at the end of that time, they were to stand before the king. Among these were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah of the tribe of Judah. And the chief of the eunuchs gave them names. Their names were changed. Daniel he called Belteshazzar. Hananiah he called Shadrach. Mishael he called Meshach. And Azariah he called Abednego. But Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food uh, or with the wine that he drank. Therefore, he asked the chief of the eunuchs to allow him not to defile himself. And God gave Daniel favor. This is the point. And God gave Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king who assigned your food and your drink. For why should he see that you are in a worse condition than the youths who you are of your age? So you should you would endanger my head with the king. Then Daniel said to the steward, whom the chief of the eunuchs had assigned over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, test your, your servants for ten days. Let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance and the appearance of the youths who eat the king's food be observed by you and deal with your servants according to what you see. So he listened to them in this matter and tested them for 10 days. At the end of the 10 days, it was seen that they were much better in appearance, much better in appearance and fatter in flesh than all the youths who ate the king's food. So the steward took away their food and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables. For as for these youths, God gave them learning and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. And this is verse 17 gives us the basis actually. It has given us what they were. It has given us about Daniel. But in verse 17, as for these youths, for youths, Daniel Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that they were given, God gave them learning and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. So you can finish up the chapter one. Now, Daniel is the person. Now, having read these few, few verses, and I just want to urge that actually you read on, you'll discover that there's something more that will be for your edification. And what we do here is for purposes of our own edification, for our knowledge, for our learning. So him being one of the prophets in the Old Testament, and the book bears his name, Daniel. He was one of the major prophets, as we have always talked about the prophets in the Old Testament. Listen, they were, you know, major and they were minor, but of course, depending on the, on the volumes of their books. And it is also, this book is also regarded as apocalyptic. And apocalyptic book, is like in the New Testament, we have the revelation talking about the end times, the end times, the end of the world and things like that. Now, Daniel is aligned in that way as one of the apocalyptic literatures that speak about things that are to happen at the end of time, destructions that will be there, the desolations that will be there. And so Daniel brings that very hard stuff, very hard message to the people of Babylon and the people that cared to listen to him. And so Daniel was this one of these young Jewish people, like we have read in chapter one, young and energetic, wisdom, skillful. 
that were handpicked, that were selected to be taken. And of course, the king had given instructions. The people of the first family, the people of nobility, people of wisdom, people of understanding. So Daniel's adventures, now, as we read about them, whatever he did with his friends, and we shall take a little bit more time in the next episodes to talk about these people because they have a lot that they live with us. And of course, our generation in Uganda or wherever. Now, we said actually the younger people are even actually more, they, you know, they, 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 and they are energetic. They are adventurous. Now, if we put ourselves, aligned ourselves with what Daniel and his friends did, then you say actually our world will become a better place. Our generation will be a praising generation with a worshiping generation, will be a God-fearing generation. So with his friends, when they were in the palace, with his friends, when they were in the furnace of fire, in, the, in his place, while they were, because I'm talking about the while they were, because all of them experienced this, those that were in the furnace, those, and Daniel in the den of lions, they all leave us and they prove to us that even during exile of friends, God had not forgotten his people. Praise the Lord. That actually times come, even in the furnace, even in the den of lands, even wherever God does not forget his people. And so this is the point that you actually want to learn, that you want to pick from these people. And it is possible also to know that we can remain faithful. We can remain faithful. You and I can remain faithful, even when we are surrounded by very many ungodly people, pagan people, defiled, soiled generation. Daniel and his friends were in the midst of all these things, but they resolved to remain faithful to God. And so even during our generation, there could be many things that are not good. There could be many things that are not pleasing to God. People around us, situations around us, but we can make a resolve to remain standing like Daniel, like Shadrach, like Meshach, and like Abednego, whose names were, begin, were given. Of course, actually, Daniel has given the name Belteshazzar, one of the godly, godly names in Babylon. And so while they were in exile, friends, God provided dreams, God provided visions, and God gave them interpretation, ability to interpret these things. Now, it's something that actually I thought through, that during our time, can there be revelations? Can there be visions? Can there be dreams? And can God raise up men and women like he raised during that generation to be interpreters of the times that are? And so we need to just present ourselves to God. And why God did this was for purposes of convincing the Jewish people who were in exile and the Babylonians who were the rulers that power and wisdom, can I repeat, power and wisdom belong to God. Because as you read through chapters one, two, three, as you go on, you'll discover that actually earthly wisdom could not work. Earthly expertise could not work. Earthly experience could not work. Now, it was only God's power, it was only God's wisdom that stood out during Daniel's time. So Daniel, deported as a young man at the age of 15, 16, just like another young man, do you know him? And this Bible keeps building on. Do you remember the other young man who was also deported, who was also sold by his brothers, taken into a country that was not his, and that was Joseph. And you remember what Joseph did in Egypt. Similar, similar characteristics. So there can be deportations. There can be times when you are taken. But God, pray the Lord, being with you. Greater things, mighty things, even when the generation is not faithful to God. So this one, these younger people were meant to be declarers. The ones to declare God is purpose. God is eternal purpose. And so friends, God can give his faithful people abilities. And it is what we are yearning for. It's what you should yearn for. Giving abilities to cause even unbelievers to appreciate you, to appreciate them. 
do something that actually an unbeliever will say, oh, this is great. Young man, young woman, this is wonderful. Remember, Daniel did what he could do. His friends did what they could do. Even when there were persecutions, even when there were... There were people who were also determined to stop them, to destroy them. But God was with them. And so we pray that actually God who was with Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego could be with the people that will stand out to continue fighting for the cause, standing for the cause of the kingdom of heaven. And so Daniel gives us a lesson here. And so many things happen in this book. And many people actually don't like reading it because of the imageries, because of the visions, because of the dreams. But when you read, actually the entire book has 12 chapters, but nine of them talk about, you know, revolve about dreams, revolve around uh, visions involving there are trees there, there are animals there, there are beasts there and there are certain images and so to some people it may seem like scaring of sorts but this was messageful and messageful for us but in all these adventures and visions daniel stands out he shows god's guidance god's interventions god's power in the affairs of human beings there were human beings and the king himself received these visions, received, you know, dreams that were so devastating and they needed interpretation. And so God positioned these young people. Just like our generation, there are many things that happen, but they need interpretation. By mere look, where are we going? By mere look, what is happening? By mere hearing, what is on? And so we need interpretive abilities to speak to our generation, Daniel spoke to his generation. So Daniel and his three friends were handsome young men. And so we talk about beauty with the purpose, praise the Lord. Because you remember chapter one when we were reading it, that they, they, were, they were young, beautiful, handsome and well-built. So we need, in the church, we need these people. Beauty with purpose, beauty with ability, beauty with experience beauty with god is anointing only you and that is what actually we are looking for young men with abilities with talents good looking without blemish gifted in wisdom chapter one gives us the the point and so i talk about this i smile about it because when i was reading it i said yes God desires nice things because God is a God of beauty. God is a God of order and he desires you men, you women, possessing knowledge, possessing understanding and quick, quick, quick to understand. Praise the Lord. We need quick understanding. We need quick action when it comes to godly things. And so these young men, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these people, God gave them his presence. Now, one other thing that I discover, this entire book, these men leave Babylon, I mean, they were taken young to Babylon and they were given for re-identification, they were given new names. And all of course, I can keep talking about the new names. And pray the Lord actually is for the purpose. Now, Daniel was given the new name that honored one of the gods of the Babylonians. One of the deities there, he was called Belteshazzar. Bel, he was God, and that Bel, Bel Belteshazzar was actually God to protect his life. So he was given the name Belteshazzar and others. Of course, actually, we have, we have all seen how they were given the names, re-identification. And some friends, they stand out, particularly Daniel, that we're talking about here, because of the three and others, we shall keep talking about them. I just found that this book is so rich, and we shall keep, we shall keep one or two more or three more episodes here in this book. But Daniel Wisdom and Divinely Given Interpretive Abilities with the new names that were given, and him for Daniel, and even the three, position, can you mention position? Yes, position. And him position and pray the Lord and and him prominence in the king's palace. And the kings were Nebuchadnezzar and Darius. 
By the way, it is known that actually the whole of Daniel's life was in Babylon. He was taken as a younger man. He was in Babylon during one king, Nebuchadnezzar. And another one was Darius. And so much of his life was that. And so he was raised from a humble beginning, from, hum from humility. And you remember that actually God raises the humble. Praise the Lord. God lifts, God lifts, God lifts the humble. And so I pray that actually God will give us the spirit of humility as young people, the spirit of humility as men, the spirit of humility as leaders, the spirit of humility, so that actually we know our position before God, who is our Father, who is in heaven. And so Daniel characterized by faith, he was characterized by prayer, he was characterized by courage, he was characterized by consistency, and he was characterized by lack of compromise. And so I call upon you, friends, these attributes, faith, may God grant it to you. Prayer, may God grant it to you. Courage, 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 may God grant it to you. Consistency, do it consistently and people will know. Actually, this, they will know your personality. They will say that okay, for him, he does things this way. For her, this is how she does. She likes order. She likes consistency. He likes beauty. She likes. And when you are known by that, it gives honor. Be it in church or even at your workplace or even in your home. And this is something that I'm looking for and lack of compromise. So Daniel was a greatly beloved man. He was in touch with angels. And I found this very, very energizing also. Angel Gabriel. You read chapter 9, verses 21 to 23, chapter 10, verse 11, chapter 10, verse 19. Now the angels, the angelic ministry was with Daniel. And so Daniel was uh, given these abilities because actually there were divine visitations. And so I'm praying that actually God is the divine visitations prevail themselves to us even today. Divine visitations during our generation, divine visitations on your life. And so actually you'll be given interpretive ability to interpret times, to interpret events, to interpret people. Because we need this wisdom and courage and so that you are able to interpret and move cautiously and carefully and praise the Lord for that. And so that is something that uh, that period of exile, well, it was not permanent though, although it was a long time that it was. And so no situation will always remain permanent. And so if you are in any situation, remember that you know that it's not permanent and God is God's hand being upon you like it was on these men daniel particularly that we're talking about here in, in the deportation uh, his faithfulness and his reputation in the king's palace is actually very very important so friends i have said a few things and basing on the chapter that you read chapter one you and i are believers daniel was also a believer during his time the three young men were also believers during that time. What can we do? What can we say that pleases God, that gives God honor, that we shall be remembered for? Daniel is remembered for these attributes that are mentioned. And so we must remain patient and faithful. Daniel and his friends remained patient even during tribulation. We many times get derailed, get devastated, get weighed down because of the situation that we are in. But Daniel, persisting on God's way, they wanted to give him the kind of food to eat. He said, put it aside. Give us according to God's will. And the Bible says that actually they looked, they looked more prettier, more handsome, more energetic than those that ate. Now we have lived in this world. Actually, you may not be having enough. You may not be having the best. But God can beautify you. God can round you and make you round, make you better than you were yesterday. So friends, it's a hostile world. Keep looking up to the Lord and for your deliverance. And at a time, God will answer you. God takes care. Daniel and his friends looked better, looked, you know. And so his life, the book of Daniel gives us the whole package. Is it nobility? Is it wisdom? Is it consistency? Is it important person in the kingdom, in the family? May God see you through. May God energize you. But keep patient and keep faithful. Daniel 
remained faithful and his entire book shows us actually being so god remains faithful and his eyes are looking are running to and fro the earth throughout the whole earth to give strong support to those whose heart is blameless second chronicles 16 9 part a of the verse now god is i to see you god is i to see me and that he will give us support during these times when things are not when things are so crooked like they were in daniel's life so may god is i see you amen and may god is i see me amen to give us support in this crooked world in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit and we say amen and amen